So, how about this board? Well, there are a few, a few improvements on this board. First is that I color-coded the circuit. Uh, the red is like data bus, the yellow is like the CPU address bus, and the orange is actually something I call the physical address bus. Uh, it's not like the physical address you would see in like modern terms is sort of similar but is not exactly the same and there are a few control lines that are the purple is the read line the brown is the right line and the green is the chip select line so and there are like multiple multiple buses that shares the same color because I just don't have a rainbow color of wires to do that but I'm proud to say that this board has more colors than I think any of the Ben Benhead projects yes <laughs> so yeah yeah and the most challenging part is this part it is basically like one impossible soldering after another and many people think about these like botch wire projects as very limited as you can basically do things with like one layer in the equivalent of one layer circuit board or two layer circuit board but it's, it's not. You can actually layer the wires onto each other until you get something like a mountain of wires. The problem is when you find a solar drawing that's buried under this mountain of wires and you found out that you find out that you are going to solder a new wire to it and it has happened multiple times I remember multiple times that I had to use my fingernail to kind of push wire around to like dig into this mountain and to try to get some clearance so that I can put my soldering iron into it and solder a new wire and sometimes the soldering iron just touch the like the insulation layer of a nearby wire and I just have to hope that it doesn't get broken and I don't get a short. And there are many ways to like mitigate this thing or I don't know if I'm using the correct word to to like make this less like pronounced to make these issues. And one is actually one that I have employed since the first of these boards but abandoned in this project which is to run wires on this side of the circuit board. Basically if you do this you will get something similar to a double sided circuit board and you need to run less wires through this part. And as you can see if you only run wires in one direction, like the part here, most of the wires are just run like horizontally like this, you are going to have a good time. But if you have like crisscross wires, like here we have horizontal, we have vertical, we have like slanted, like wires that's going sideways, and we have crossing wires here, and you're going to get a mess. So, and a way to do this is just to like do it as if you have a two side circuit board. Uh, all the horizontal wires go here, and all the vertical wires go here. Right? But aban I abandoned that method in this project because that method basically requires you to figure out 
the design and layout of the whole circuit board like before you start populating these chips because there are actually tiny gaps under these bars that you can like draw the wire through but not under these like bars when the majority of the pins go through so it's not actually like a completely like a double layer circuit board where where you can just rub wire wires on this side horizontally across these like sockets you can do it you cannot do it with the botch wires and the other is that if you want to like desolder a wire it is very hard it's much harder to do it with wires on this side versus wires on this side because you can literally easily pick up like a wire and like lift it and uh, putting like solar iron on it and if you do it with wires from this side first they are very likely to be deep in the trenches between the 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 chips and basically which means you you need to be very lucky if you need to if you can reach them even with a tweezer because there might be multiple wires going through one trench and they are probably going to stack on top of each other and you are probably going to like desolder a whole stack in order to get it down get it get the thing out of uh, get the wire out of the board and let's imagine you can do, do that you need something to hold the board up like this because you are going to pull the wire on the back side on this side and you are going to apply the solar iron apply the heat on this side and that adds another layer of complexity I actually have I actually have a tool to do this that like a claim that clamps onto the a clamp that clamps onto the side of the board and holds it up like this however the problem is that that clamp is too small that I think I can do it like this like clamp it like this but not like this so that poses another problem because I really need to be able to work it in any direction because this thing is already complex enough if I find a wire in some awkward position that it's harder to reach in this position I don't think it's likely to happen because my hand is going like this but if the board is held like up like this it's going to be very high up in the air if if the angle is very big and if the angle is small it's hard to like put your hand under there so yeah this might po pose a problem and the other is that even if you catch it you pull it and you find that it's not going through uh, the hole that you are soldering it, it on is not going to be uh, the hole that is going through because it must like go through this hole here and then solder to here and if you pull it you are applying a horizontal force and this might cause a few consequences you might get solder bridges because the, the, the solder is like pulled along the wire it goes with the wire a little bit and second you might damage the like the insulation layer 
because some of the insulation layer, like this, if you heat it up, it's going to get like melted and sticky and it sticks to the board and yeah. And, and if you pull it, you might like get the wire just peel off and come out and that renders that section of the insulation layer basically unusable. So you might lose some insulation layer and if you lose too many insulation layer you might find out later that if you want to put that wire back in you don't have enough insulation to like insulate against like nearby wires so you might just find out that you need to replace the whole wire which adds a whole bunch of complexity to the project basically this method is only applicable when you are very confident about you are doing the right thing which I'm not with this project or if the circuit board is very simple and uh, there are a lot of uh, large gaps between the, the circuits like with this board or it's like the second build where you know that your circuit is working like this one so I made a mistake here I use that method extensively as you can see we've got layers and layers of wires going through these tren trenches and they are a nightmare to desolder and I had to desolder the, the wires here multiple times because this is the first build and this is the first time I worked on like interfacing the PPU and especially the AY3 chip which is kind of notoriously hard to connect to a normal bus because it's designed for a proprietary bus designed by the like the general instruments yes I think it's, it's, it's the general instruments like CP1600 bus so I learned the lesson and designed this board like this I mean it's not the cleanest design and the, the wire mounting here just give me a ton of trouble and if I do another board like this which I swear that I won't I'm going to route the wires on this side but there's another trick that I use extensively on this board that is to solder the wires from one side to another that is basically because when you want to cross the wires when you want a wire to go through like the gap between two solder joints it's better to have those joints pre-soldered because if the wire is going through and it's got an insulation layer around it and if you heat up the left hand side and the right hand side the layer is going to melt and shrink and going to expose uh, there is a possibility let's say I've seen like 16%, 60% or 70% times that it doesn't do that, it doesn't expose the metal wire inside or it expose a little bit but it's not a big concern but there are like 20 to 30% even 40% if you are not careful with it chance that that wire is going to lose it insulation there and it's going to like it's going to short with the closest solder joint because 
is going between this other line. So you need to replace that wire. And that is first. And second, this is what Ben had called daisy chaining. Basically, you use a single wire to do a long connection, like a bus. So the benefit of that is that, is that it saves you a lot of trouble. Now, what do you mean by saving a lot of trouble? You might ask, well, I mean, if you have two wires, like solder to a joint, your soldering iron might be like pushing on one of them and not the other and the, the other when the when the uh, when the solder is melted the other might just pop up and you need to push down this one and this one pops up so so it's hard to get both of them like pushed down and like hold steady there and if you do that with the solar iron if you are lucky enough to like hold both of them in, in place you will find that if you release the solar iron they'll both pop up because there is like elastic potential energy stored in those wires they don't want to be held down like that so so that that will be a problem if it's just one wire soldering onto a joint you can push it down with one finger here and solder there because you have two hands right uh, another trick is that a lot of soldering tutorial like advise or suggest you to first heat up the the solder joint and then apply the solder I find that not actually applicable in this you might have to just heat up the pan heat up the solder joint and apply the solder without the wire and then just stick the wire in while the solder is still a melted pot and then remove the solder iron let it cool down and you are good to go so back to daisy chaining you cannot do that with like two wires because you have only one hand uh, no <laughs> because you have only one hand to hold down the wire I mean <laughs> it sounds ridiculous humans do, don't, don't have two hands <laughs> I'm sounding like humans has only one hand I'm from some alien world or something like ridiculous joke but humans only have two hands and one of them is going to use to be used to hold the soldering iron that's much clearer so that's why uh, you need to do this kind of daisy chaining thing but it's not like really daisy chaining because daisy chaining is you connect the wire to something and it use another wire to connect to another thing and then the third thing is like the exact opposite of daisy chaining so I don't know <laughs> uh, but there is a problem there's no bare metal to solder uh, in like within the like the middle section of the wire you, you can like easily use fingernail to just strip away a few millimeters on each end but to do it in the middle, you need some tricks. So what Ben Eath, not Ben Eath, not what Ben Hack does, is 
he used a little like knife to cut up the the wires and then he directly solder it with the uh, like insulation layer on so yeah that is a method but I got into like these prototype board super solder or what I call mega botch <laughs> because these are like mega botch wire projects so like a ton of botch wires before I watched any of the Ben Hack like projects I actually developed my own method which is you have this wire and you measure the length and you determine the place and then you directly put the solder iron onto that wire it's like you hang it in the air and you just put the iron here and the insulation layer will instantly melt and you kind of rub the surface with the solar iron a little bit and the you will see the metal inside and then when the wire is hot you pull the insulation layer to one side so that it forms like a D shape or a D shape basically this is the metal and the insulation here just goes off and then back and you cut this point and that point so cut this away and you got a section of bare metal wire I really want to show it uh, on screen but I found out in the last video that the place that I do soldering is quite noisy so I don't want to make a noisy video so that's my technique it's not perfect basically it requires you to put solar iron on something that's plastic it just creates a black residue on the solder iron uh, it creates like really bad smell that is the plastic melting or like the rubber melting I, I don't know because I don't know what the insulation layer is made of but yeah and I, and I think that smells unhealthy it's bad for your health but I find that to be working reliably and I have a fan next to me if I'm going to do such soldering job I'm going to turn it on and hope it blow some of that film away but this method will not work perfectly will not work perfectly if you don't have again the whole layer of the board just in your mind prepared like you're not going to have it but it doesn't need to work like a hundred percent of times if it works like seventy percent of times you will have a good time basically you will find like very little chance that you need to like dig into the wires and try to add another wire to a solder joint but it happens to me and I basically managed to do it and uh, I need a lot of testing after each time I do that because I don't want to create a short but so far so good there are no shorts even if I have to like dig into the wires and do a new soldering 